So it's that time of the week, the Ask Guillem moment. Thank you very much for your questions. Really interesting stuff you sent uh, uh, through Twitter. And uh, let's deal with it straight away with the perhaps the big story of the week. Hazard says he wants to go to Real Madrid, but what does Real Madrid think? The question comes from uh, Napi, and he says, what's the update on Hazard to Real Madrid? The story is, we know that uh, Hazard wants to go to Real Madrid. It's his dream, a real dream. And uh, Real Madrid considered and thought about it in the summer. But he would, they were told no uh, price for Hazard, and they did not insist. It was one of the calls that they made in terms of what to do if Neymar wasn't coming. Eventually decided not to go for anybody and to reinforce the squad that's there already and uh, trying to get the best out of that. I feel this is a year in which it's like, okay, Gareth Bale is your chance to uh, show what he can do. Uh, Marco Sensio, time to grow. Benzema, come on, give us goals. But if it goes really bad, it's not a total disaster. They come from winning the Champions League four times in five years. But is Hazard a target for next season? It's been reported that uh, Real Madrid will go for him in the winter, in, in January. I don't believe that's the case. What's quite clear is that they still got Neymar, and I will add Mbappé, one of the two, as the main target next season and a new stadium. Or, uh, not a new stadium, sorry, to rebuild the stadium. That's going to mean that um, uh, it explains why in the last five years Real Madrid have basically spent the same amount of money that they brought in from selling players. And they haven't gone for a Galactico since since James Rodriguez. So what you've got is a Real Madrid thinking, okay, there is this bunch of money that will try, uh, they will try to bring one of the superstars in the world, and they consider Neymar and Mbappé to be in that category, and also this other bunch of money for the stadium. Hazard will insist, but he's in a win-win situation, of course, because if, say, uh, Real Madrid eventually don't go for him, and at the moment he is not, right now, he's not a top target. Um, if Real Madrid goes like and loses the next 10 games, who knows? Because that's what Real Madrid are doing, that's how they go day by day. But He's not a top target now. If he decides, uh, if, if Ramadi don't go for him, then what you got is him signing possibly a new contract. Uh, Chelsea have put it on the table in which, uh, well, very lucrative one. So it's a win-win situation for Hazard. But as I said, not in January for Real Madrid. He's not the top target right now in the summer. What else? We've got uh, Isaac Kilonso saying, analyze Unai Emery's style of play and how it's different with Wenger's. The main thing here is that um, basically Wenger didn't care so much about the rival. And Unai Emery, for the last two days before the game, concentrates on what to do to affect the rival. That is sometimes about the way they attack. It's also about the way they defend. But it's information that the players uh, come out on the pitch now with, which they didn't have before. I remember uh, there was a game against Barcelona a few years back. This was four or five years back. And I know a couple of players there said, we didn't know enough about Barcelona. We came out thinking, uh, you know, they're going to kill us because we just don't know enough of how they attack. Uh, obviously, since then, everybody knows by watching Barcelona how they do it. But uh, it was interesting that Benga always decided that the priority was to allow players to grow based on the freedom to do whatever they wanted on the pitch and their intuition. Well, uh, that is the main difference with um, with Unai Emery, who also has uh, established a more tight and disciplined, not a huge discipline, but a little bit more in terms of food uh, and, uh, and, and the relationship of players with the coach that is more dialogue, uh, a more collective dialogue as well. He tends to talk individually and collectively to players. He's done so with Ozil, uh, with Ramsey. And all that, by the way, will get explained in the next few days in an article, a long article, which I'm preparing for gold.com. Blaugrana7754 says, Valverde under pressure, which available managers are the club looking at if things don't improve? They're not looking for a replacement right now. They left everything to March. This is the possibility of renewing the contract one more year. So it's, it's agreed in which terms that extension will be. But of course, they both have to decide that that's the thing to do. Neither of them are taking that step right now. So at the moment, there is no look at any other manager right now. And they feel that Valverde uh, uh, 
will improve things. There is confidence from him. That's the confidence of Alberti's feeling from the board. Uh, you then hear a different story when you talk to the media and they say that they've been briefed by key directors there saying Alberti is not the man. But uh, it's also the case sometimes that the words are taken a little bit too far away from the context. Uh, my impression is perhaps there are doubts from some of the board members, but that's not what they're telling him or his entourage. They're saying to him, just keep going, this will work and Barcelona will challenge for titles. Cabambuca Prosper in Krapos 0522 uh, says, what is behind current Real Madrid pool form? Is it due to Ronaldo departure or manager? What will be the way forward? Well, it's a mixture of things. Uh, crisis like this, uh, the fact that they haven't scored in six hours, 49 minutes, for instance, don't come by chance. They shoot less, they score less, of course, and they create less chances. Chances weren't down to Ronaldo. Shooting, yes, but Ronaldo always... Uh, um, used his ability to, because he gets the ball always to him, to shoot from wherever distance. In this period last season, he wasn't very effective. He only scored four goals until January anyway. But they were creating more danger. What's happened to Real Madrid is that the the team has gone from being a super team, in super squad, that's the key, to being a good team, very good team, but not a super squad. So the fact that they've been replacing, as I said last week, um, basically the the the... Uh, some of the top players for players with potential has meant that the squad has diminished its quality. That's one. Isco, since he got injured, also has affected the side. Uh, and generally, there's a lack of confidence throughout the team. Uh, the ones that were supposed to step up uh, was Benzema, who started very well. And Bale, who has had a couple of problems with injuries. He's injured, uh, I'm hearing. Right now, he's not training with Wales. Uh, by the time you hear this, probably uh, Ryan Giggs has spoken about it anyway, but it looks like he will miss the game against Spain. Uh, without them too, and those are the guys with the goals, Marc Asensio has to also improve, but uh, he's still in the process of becoming the player that he can be. And that's the problem with Real Madrid. They're going at the moment with what it could be, not with what it is, not with the guaranteed um, goal scorer. Icardi wanted to come, Lewandowski wanted to come, and Cavani wanted to come, and Ramadi said, no, we'll use what we have. The money's kept for Neymar or Mbappé for next season. What else? Um, the impact of Sarri on Chelsea, having lost no games. The impact is clear for everybody to see, and it's got to do with directness, it's got to do with aggression to get the ball, it's got to do with confidence, it's got to do with victories. My worry is that he's only using the same kind of players, and he's got to open up to use others because this kind of energy will die down a little bit if he continues like this. But uh, so far, so good. And uh, even players that are not playing regularly, like Sesk is talking very highly of Sarri. Uh, it's interesting that the Hazard situation with Sarri, uh, has, uh, Sarri would like Hazard to be more disciplined and to do more of the things that he's asking him to do. But actually, Hazard is just lifting his game by just being more free or freer. So uh, it's interesting that creative um, clash there, which, uh, which of course the coach will try to bring more to keep at this obligation, especially when we lose the ball, you have to be here and here and here, and you have to do this and this and that. Meanwhile, uh, of course, Hazard scoring the goals that's taking uh, him to be uh, the top of the goal scoring charge in, in Europe, one of the top ones. And also, of course, Chelsea uh, high up in the table. What else? Can Sevilla finish top two? It's too early to say that, but it's an interesting year in which everybody's dropping points. I think uh, Sevilla, Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid and Barcelona will be the top four. It looks that way. And we will see how we all share uh, their positions. I don't think Sevilla will be top two for one reason. The squad of Atletico Madrid is perhaps the best out of the squads of those four. I'm not talking about the 11. The 11, you can argue if Barcelona and Madrid have got the strongest, but the squad of Atletico Madrid is very, very powerful and has got a lot of variations. And some of them are already playing. Uh, Kalinic, uh, Arias came on as well at the weekend. Uh, you've got uh, Rodri, Lemar. They're all making an impact. So that's good news. Gerson is the only one that hasn't yet, uh, which means that that probably will take them to a top two position. And, uh, and Sevilla, uh, of course, who team that has found the form that they have by accident in a way. Injuries have meant to uh, Gon Alonso and to Amadou. Holding midfielders has meant that they've gone for Ever Banega and Mudo Vázquez and Sarabia as the centre midfield. 
And uh, that was not planned. It was planned to have one striker, Ander Silva, and to sell Ben Yedder. Uh, and to buy another striker, and instead Ben Yedder is scoring. Football is funny, and Paolo Machin, that's one of his talents, to be able to adapt what he has in his hands, and he's done that superbly. But uh, I feel that um, uh, Sergi Gomez, uh, the centre-back, and Banega are playing too much, and perhaps that will affect them in the long run. One more on Aston Villa, uh, because he says... Uh, from my Villa view, can you shed some light on the new sporting director Pitarch or uh, Aston Villa? Will you do will will you do well? Do you think it's not me? <laughs> uh, will he do well? Is uh, is asking of course. What kind of reputation does he have? Uh, let me tell you a little bit of his, about his um, his CV. He was with Valencia, the famous Valencia that Rafa Benitez uh, and him uh, basically took to win titles, uh, league and UEFA Cup. One league and UEFA Cup in the case of, uh, of uh, García Pitarch, two leagues for in the case of Rafa Benitez. They clashed, both of them, because, of course, García Pitarch had the vision of the club, didn't want to spend too much money, and some of the money he spent wasn't what Rafa Benitez wanted, um, and there was a clash with Rafa Benitez. They both left Valencia at the same time. Then García Pitarch ended up at Atlético Madrid, and he did very cleverly as well. I think he was four years there at a team that for six years had not... Uh, been in European competition and for 10 years have not won anything. They actually went into the Champions League with him uh, and won the UEFA Cup and also an European Super Cup with him. And that was the beginning of the transformation of Atletico Madrid. Clever signings, intelligent football man who, even though he's been away from football, because after Atletico Madrid there were other um, jobs that he was with, uh, Zaragoza, uh, Hercules, he was in Abu Dhabi, and he went for a year to Valencia with Peter Lim, uh, and after in December 2017, he left Valencia. Basically, because it, it was at that point difficult to manage a Valencia side that uh, perhaps Peter Lim wasn't hearing the people that were on the ground. Now he's hearing them more, and he's leaving Alemán, Vicente Alemán, and, uh, and Marcelino to run the club. Uh, at that point, it was in, in different circumstances. So uh, if you want to see what García Pitarch can do with any club, you look at what he did, he did with Valencia and Atletico Madrid earlier on. And that's Ask Guillem for this week. I'm going for lunch and then I'm going to La Liga TV. We will be talking about Sevilla, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona and Real Madrid, of course. Of course. Especially Sevilla. What a story.